Hey y'all, today I have a jacket on. We actually had a cool front come in. It's going to be in the 70s, which is actually going to be pretty spectacular gardening weather. And um, I'm going to unpack my wagon and show you all of the super cool native plants that I bought. You're finally going to get to see them as promised. And I'm going to work on moving all these plants in my soon to be expanded wetland section that's that's going to be coming soon right here. I am so excited for it. So I still have quite a few plants to move, but I'm excited to use them to fill in other spaces and make them nice and dense and lush like I love. So I think we'll start there. So most of the plants in here are just going to go across the newly weeded walkway into this garden section here. I know this looks pretty full, <laughs> but it can be fuller. I'm digging up the salvias and just moving them along this edge right here. So this little penta here that I just dug up was actually in the ground and growing out sideways. So by digging it up and moving it, I'm going to be able to plant it upright and then it can start, see how it's growing off to, see how I turn my head to show that it's growing off to the side? Well, when I plant it upright, it'll grow back upright and be the gorgeous penta it's supposed to be. And it also gives me a chance to get down in the base, which I've already done on this one, but I can really like trim out the dead and spent parts and some of these stems over here and just freshen it up and clean it up, put it in its new home and get it going so it can be the beautiful penta it was meant to be. See, look how much greener it looks now that I've trimmed it up and cleaned it up. And now I'm going to go get it in the ground and give it a big drink on this gorgeous root system. Y'all, I feel like I keep moving plants out of here and it still looks full of plants. I have moved a lot of plants over here. And look who's here. A little swallowtail. It's a little spice bush. So I think I've moved as many into that area as I can get away with it without it becoming too overcrowded. So in and around where I put all those plants is nice loose dirt. And so I'm going to go get some zinnia seeds and sprinkle them all in and amongst and around so they can come up in that nice loose dirt. And then I'm going to decide where the rest of those pentas are going to go. So I have these... Uh, Eden Brothers Cactus Snowman Zinnias and I've got a lot of them but they're they're like from are they from last year I don't know they've been open a year not that anything's wrong with that but I'm just gonna throw them all in there and we'll see what happens so see all that good loose dirt in between yeah we're just gonna do a little zinnia seed sprinkle sprinkle mm-hmm yeah I totally got sidetracked I think secretly my mind is trying to avoid doing the serious digging that's to come for my wetland project. And so I built a whole new walkway <laughs> through the one garden section where I was moving all those pentas because there were a bunch of weeds growing in. So then I started pulling the weeds. I thought, well, if I move these stones together closer, then less weeds can grow. And then it became a thing. Let me show you. I'm going to show you that. And then the area where I move the pentas, I'm going to give them a good sprinkling 
of some uprising fertilizer and it's gonna take a moment and water them all in. Here is my new and improved walkway. I didn't even show you a before. It just kind of sort of happened, but I love it. And now that everything's closer together, there'll be less weeds growing in. All right, so I'm gonna go fertilize this area and give it a good watering. And y'all, do I measure this? No, I do this. And yeah, some of it's going to get caught up on the leaves, but I'm going to water it with my soaker hose. And so the heavy flow of that will push it all down to the earth. And this is linked below in my Amazon affiliate links. If you're interested in trying someone, it's by Roots Organics. I love it. Yeah, look who just closed. Out here working on my garden and I glanced up and saw a little shadow moving around and looky there. And look what I see right beside. Look, I found out where one of them went. Oh my gosh, and I see another one. <laughs> okay, so this is a, one of the Eastern Black Swallowtail caterpillars and it's a J hanging getting ready to pupate. And then I just noticed over here, it's hard to see because in the shade, but that is another Eastern Black Swallowtail Chrysalis. So how cool is that? We found two of them. Here's a little caterpillar. It's out sunning itself. somebody is ready to get out. This fuzzy little back. I love their fuzzy little backs. Hi, baby. Hey, y'all. I just got out of the doctor's and I am free of the boot. You know, I have to keep it around in case like my foot starts hurting again, but um, I'm free of the boot. I haven't talked about it much, I know, because, you know, if you don't talk about it, it's not real. So I just wanted to have a little car chat and uh, I'm parked in the parking lot. Don't worry, I'm not driving degrees. I'm sitting here looking at my car temperature. It's 52 and I feel like it's a feels like a 32. Can you see, and <laughs> I point there, but I really want you to look over there. It is like overcast and gray. I feel like it's like January when it is dismal days and it's not this is march oh my gosh and one of my uh subscribers just posted that they're going to be down to 25 and all their spring growth is out and what is this going to do so i'm, I'm grateful i'm in 52 but i don't like it this is my spring break and anyway it's going to warm up today so hopefully I'll be back in my garden before you know it and gardening, but it's so dismal out, but I'm out of the boot. So yay. All right. I'll see y'all later. Hey y'all, it is the afternoon. The blue sky is back. The sun is shining and it's time to talk about those plants that I bought over the weekend and uh, what they're for, who they're going to attract to my garden and pretty much why I bought them. The first one we're gonna talk about is right here. It's currently not flowering, but this is good old frog fruit or fog fruit a lot of times this is thought of as a weed 
but in fact, it gets these cute little adorable flowers on it. It makes a great ground cover, and it is the host plant to the common buckeye, the fan crest, and the white peacock butterfly. I have raised white peacock caterpillars before. They're adorable and I hope to get more. Now we have some of this in our front yard, but now I'm gonna have it in the back. And I read, you know, if you don't want this spreading all over as ground cover and taking over, it does well in hanging baskets. And I recently, inherited here that bird is fabulous i recently inherited a bunch of hanging basket hangers from a family member who had them all over their yard no longer needs them so i ordered some empty hanging baskets from amazon which will be arriving tomorrow and i'm going to plant each of these in one and then um you know put them out in full sun they like full sun somewhere in my garden Maybe, maybe I'll get those caterpillars again. They're adorable. They're, they're little and they're black and they're fuzzy. And um, I did raise and release one. Um, no, wait, more than one. I did raise and release some, but it's been a while and I'm ready to have some more. The next plant is the partridge pea. Now this is pretty common and a lot of you guys are probably like, how do you not have one of those yet? And um, actually I had these two in the front yard again. So now they just have to have some in the backyard because they're a host plant to some sulfurs, the, um, the cloudless sulfur, the sleepy orange sulfur, and the orange sulfur, as well as the gray hair streak and a little yellow and the serenus blue so this had to be an addition to my backyard butterfly garden i got two of them and i already planted one in a pot let me go show you where so it is right here and if you recall this is the plant that i got that little caterpillar off of at the nectary when i put in the butterfly garden there so you know we got to have more of those and this is another grass that i'm adding to my garden you know i've been collecting different grasses because they are hosts and this is a host plant to a variety of skippers and i love skippers so the more of them in my garden the better so i'm going to add this to my grasses collection they're native native grasses i think i got three of these uh, they do thrive in full sun. I'm not sure where I'm going to put them yet. They might end up in pots like some of my other grasses. I don't know. We'll see. This one is the Florida Penny Royal. And you can see there's little teeny tiny like really light purple flowers on it. I got two of these. These things were covered in bees like all over them there was like a whole um display table arrangement of them covered as soon as i saw that well actually i heard it first and i saw it i said some of this is coming home with me because i love having plants that also invite bees to my garden so and um, small butterflies will probably enjoy this for nectar as well. But mainly, I got this for the bees. Florida Penny Royal. Next is the Harry Pod Cow Pea. And it is a native to Florida. It reminds me of the butterfly pea and actually hosts some very similar um, caterpillar larva. It will host the Cassius Blue, the Long-Tailed Skipper, the Gray Hair Streak, and a Durantas Skipper, which is super cool. Um, it is a vine, and it gets yellow flowers on it, and I'm gonna plant it over, I think, near my butterfly pea, and put a little trellis up for it. And uh, we'll see how it does. I'm excited to have this because I love the skippers. They're just adorable little butterflies and the more the better. The next plant I'm gonna show you is a bit of a conundrum to me because it's the bird's foot violet, viola pedata. And 
it doesn't seem to be native in Florida. So I'm not sure why it was there as a native plant. I did find a variety that is listed as a native of Florida, but I don't find it connected as the same host plant. However, the variegated fritillary is said to host on wild violets. So I'm assuming it's a wild violet that will host the variegated fritillary, which does live in Florida. I have not ever had one in my garden that I know of, so we're gonna give it a go. Even though this particular variety says it's zone three through eight, which I'm nine. Um, so I might put it in pots and just kind of move it around the garden, see what it tolerates, what it does not. I don't know. We'll give it a go. So here it is right here. It's actually adorable. It's called bird's foot because the little feet, the little feet, the little leaves look like bird feet. And it does get the violet flower on it. Look how big the flower is <laughs> compared to the leaf so it's beautiful and i'm excited to have it and here's how they had it labeled this was at green isle gardens and um so any of you knowledgeable native plant people out there that know anything more about this and whether it is a florida native i'd love to hear from you let me know meanwhile there it is and then right next to that, we have the water hyssop. The water hyssop is going to go in my new um, wetlands garden. And it is also a host to the white peacock. It will get those adorable little caterpillars, hopefully. And then I also got two purple thistles. Now, these are the larval hosts of the Little Metal Mark and the Painted Lady. And they also make seeds that birds love. And they're also hard to control in the landscape because they like to spread through underground runners. And being as these are quite prickly and pokey, we're going to control them and try to keep them in pots. And the last plant that I have to talk about right now is the southern fog fruit not to be mixed up with the other fog fruit slash frog fruit that I showed you earlier which was the turkey tangle fog fruit this is the southern fog fruit and it actually is native to Florida but it's only found in South Florida and it lives in very wet areas so it's actually an endangered native plant in Florida, and I'm going to try it out <laughs> here, Ray, and now Coco. Mm -hmm. They knew. I was filming, and they, they wanted to be heard. I'm actually going to try this plant out in my wetlands garden, and we'll see how it does. I think I got three of them. So again, it's the same host as the other fog fruit, frog fruit, that I'm going to try in the hanging baskets, which are the Fayan Crescent, the White Peacock, and the Common Buckeye. So we're going to give it a go. So there is one more plant that I got, and I already have some of them. And I can't, for the life of me, think of the name of it but it is another plant for my wetland garden and I already have one, I think I already said that. And so when I put my wetland garden in, I'm gonna go back and make sure I have all the names of all the plants and when I put it in, I'll let you know the name of it then. It's like Aaron, oh, I don't, I can't, I can't. So, before I go in the house and edit this video to schedule to upload tomorrow, because tomorrow's day is full and you'll find out what that, what I'm doing tomorrow in my next video. But, um, funny story, I was out here talking to my husband yesterday. We sit out in the garden and have a little chat and I say, you know, as many sulfur butterflies as I see, I cannot believe I don't have any caterpillars. 
And then he went in the house and I stayed out and I thought, well, I'm just going to go look at the one privet sunna that I have back here because, you know, I haven't really climbed back and there's like some weeds and stuff growing back there. Um, to look, <laughs> I found five, five sulfur caterpillars. So I moved them into the haven and I'm just going to go show you a couple real quick and then... Well, that one's sitting right out, making sure it gets this picture taken. And I do see another one right there. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. So on this plant, and you saw me pot this, I mean, not too many videos ago. And it's already serving its purpose. Here's a little monarch. It's time to go in and edit my video. And if you want to stick around and see how the wetland garden comes out and how these plants do in the garden and what the potted plants look like and everything else, butterfly gardening, then subscribe to my channel and keep watching.